In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a custom test rule. So this, this video is part of a uh, full length course on my website, by the way, if you're just watching this kind of coming in. So this isn't going to make sense if you didn't watch the other videos. So I, before I continue on right away, I just want to say, go and watch the rest of the course because the code that I'm looking at is not going to make any sense to you. If you want to watch the course, it's completely free. Just go to codingwithmitch.com, go to courses and go to UI testing for beginners. Again, it's completely free. Just register. It takes 30 seconds. So now, uh, that being said, let's um, let's continue with this video. So this is going to be on a custom test rule. So if you've been following along with the course, which at this point I expect everybody who's still watching to have been following along, we've been working with the Espresso Idling resort, Resource uh, pretty recently. So remember, if we have any kind of a delay, we always have to register this idling resource with this before annotation, with the after annotation, unregistering it. Um, kind of a, a bunch of things that we need to do uh, every single time, every in every single test class before every single test. So what a test rule can do, as you are probably guessing from how we've used them before, like the activity scenario rule, it kind of um, creates a predefined set of things that will get that will happen before each test function is run. So like for the activity scenario rule example, this creates a simulated activity, a brand new one before each test function is run. So before this test function is run, before this test function is run, um, th the new activity gets brought, uh, kind of all, all uh, created in the background so that it prepares us for that test. So we can actually create custom rules that define uh, custom behavior to save us from writing code and also to make um, like sort of setup procedures more shippable to other classes. So if you can imagine like in this in the espresso idling resource case, this ha if we had delays, we would have to register this in every single one of our test classes. So why not create a rule for it so that we don't have to write this? We can do it in one line. And obviously this isn't even like a really big one. This is only, you know, one line here, one line here. If you can imagine in a before block, if you had, you know, 10 lines or 20 lines, that would become very tedious. So creating a rule in that scenario would pay off big dividends. So obviously we're gonna start simple and just use uh, create a rule for this kind of simple use case. So right away, um, we're, I'm gonna leave this here for now, but we are going to be removing this. The goal of, of this video is to be remove this and, and create a rule. So I'll comment it out. And now let's create that, uh, that rule class. So I'm gonna go over to the main package directory inside of Android test. I'm gonna right click and create a new package named util and then inside util I'm going to create a new rule class. So this this class is going to be called uh, espresso idling resource rule. So hopefully you can see that. Click OK and no I don't want to add that to git. So first I'm going to give myself a whole bunch of room. So now there's a there's a couple ways you can do this. There's kind of the more verbose way, the kind of long-handed way that gives you more control over everything that happens in the rule or you can do it kind of the simple way. I'm gonna show you both ways and I'm gonna show you how the simple way actually is basically the same as the long-handed way and is my preferred method. So first let's do it the long way. So I'll actually write a comment up here just saying, you know, uh, option, option one, and then do this option is much more difficult, difficult to read and is more verbose. All right, so now let's, let's make this. So class, Espresso, espresso idling resource rule. I'm going to extend, or I'm going to implement the test rule interface and open this up. Now up here, it's giving me a warning. I need to implement some members. So Alt Enter, implement members, get the apply function. And this is the first kind of step in building this uh, this rule. So this apply function forces you to return a statement. So this is sta this statement object. That's basically the thing that we want to execute. So I'm going to create a, a new class and we'll create a, a custom statement. So it'll be class idling resource statement. Uh, it'll take uh, in, as input a private value base, which will be the, the statement that actually gets executed. So a nullable statement. And it's going to, of course, return a, a statement object and then open this up. So it's giving me a warning here. I need to go Alt Enter, Implement Members, get the Evaluate function. This is what will evaluate our, our, uh, our statement. So I'll create a private variable in here, private value idling resource equals espresso idling resource dot counting idling resource, getting a reference to that. I'll actually close this too to give us some more room because we're going to run out here. Now inside of ev evaluate, I want to do idling, idling registry dot get instance and then dot register. So this is the same thing we do uh, kind of in the before block if we look here in the movie list fragment in the before block here. So registering that idling resource. 
Now comes kind of the complicated part that makes using the other method, option number two, much simpler, and you'll see later on when we when we take a look at that. So I'm gonna do try and finally. Instead of try, I'm gonna do base. If the base is not null, I want to evaluate it. And then if it is null, then I want to throw an exception. So throw exception, and inside here I'll just say error evaluating test. Uh, I can say base statement is bad. Base statement is null. Okay, now finally, I want to um, finish off the, I don't want to un unregister the idling resource. So idling registry, get instance dot unregister our idling resource. So essentially you can think of like the before block as up here and then the after block is down here. So you can do like, you know, before and then after. That's kind of how this is structured. So kind of, kind of complicated, a little bit unclear as to where kind of everything goes. And now up here in this apply function, I want to return that uh, idling resource so return idling resource statement and then just initialize that and as input i need to pass the base statement so that would be it that would be our rule and we could we could use that so like i could go over here into our test class do at get rule and add that uh, espresso idling resource rule so espresso idling resource rule oops i want rule equals the espresso idling resource rule and then just initialize that so that would work that would be just fine but now let me show you the simple way to do this so I'm going to comment all of this out because it's more complicated than it needs to be I think and now I'll show you the the simple way so option number two and this is the simplified version of option number one uh, basically so I'll just do test watcher class implements the test rule. So it's a class that already implements a test rule and it kind of makes it a lot simpler. So class uh, espresso, espresso idling resource rule implements the test watcher class. So initializing that. And now I just want to create the, the idling resource. So private val idling resource equals espresso idling resource dot counting idling resource. And now all I need to do is do control O and I want to get the finished function and the starting function. So getting those, and I'm gonna explain these in more detail in just a second, uh, but essentially you can think of this as like uh, after, so like the after block, and this is like the before block. So now before super dot uh, finished is called, I just wanna do idling registry, get instance, and then register, or sorry, unregister in this case, we wanna unregister our idling resource. And then as you probably guessed down here in starting, I wanna do idling registry dot get instance, and then register, that idling resource. So much, much simpler and also much more clear as to like what you're doing up here. Oh, whoops, I have a, a bracket kind of uh, mix up up here. That actually needs to be commented out. That bracket should be over here, closing that off and commented out. I accidentally uh, included that inside the class. So this class is, is standing alone over here. So much simpler, as I said. So how does this work? Well, if you take a look at the test watcher class, so if we press control and then left click on here, we can take a look at test watcher and you can see that it actually already implements test rule. So this, the structure that we looked at in the first option up here is the same structure right here. So it implements test rule. We have our evaluate function. You can think of like the before block right here. So you can see it's calling starting quietly. If you take a look at starting quietly, so if I control left click on here, all it's doing is it's calling starting, the starting function. Hey, that looks familiar right here. There's our starting function. So this is, this is what's called first. Now, if I go back up, you know, after it started, it executes it, it evaluates it. And then afterwards, if you take a look down here and finished or in finally, you have finished quietly. If you look control left click on finished quietly, you see that it calls finished. Hey, that also looks familiar. If you look over here, hey, there's our finished function. So all it is, is it's a shorthand way to do the exact same thing. You're essentially just getting access to the functions that you need, which is before and after. Everything else is like handled for you. You know, the only the only scenario I can think of that you would wanna build like your complete custom test rule is if you wanna control over the error handling. You know, you can see here, there's a lot of stuff happening here. You have your try catch, it's catching this, you know, deprecated warning thing. It's catching this throwable. Uh, you're, it's calling this failed quietly, skipped quietly. All of these kind of extra functions in here, um, multiple failure exception, you know, all kinds of different stuff. If you wanted more control, this is what you would want to do. You want to go like uh, implement the test rule and then build your own test rule. But I'd probably say for like, you know, 99% of the cases, just implement test rule or extend by the test watcher, sorry, and then use 
finished and starting and you can define your uh, before and after block because that's really all you care about. So that's, that's, our, that's our new test rule. We have added it to our uh, movie list fragment test. Uh, I'm actually going to comment out this test because this shouldn't be in here. I should have removed that from the source code. So this is now the code that you, we were looking at in the previous video. I'm just going to right click on here, go to run and see if this passes, which it should run exactly the same as the previous uh, previous tests. And there we go. We get all of our green check marks. Everything is working exactly as we expect, exactly as it should. So that um, that's going to be it for this video. Um, I'm just looking at my uh, my course outline here. I think I think I'm gonna end. I think I'm gonna end the beginner's course here. Actually, I might do like uh, one more video after this one, just talking about some other kind of um, some things you might want to know. But there's gonna be no code involved. Just kind of generally other things that you might want to know about um, uh, UI testing. But this is likely going to be end of the end of the beginner's UI testing course. So now I'm going to start working on the more advanced course. So we're going to test things like, um, you know, architecture, live data, repository pattern, view models, doing network requests, doing cache requests, mocking out Glide, mocking out image loaders, all that kind of more advanced stuff. That's what I'm going to be putting in the more advanced course. So make sure that if you uh, haven't registered on my website, go to coningwithmitch.com and register. And uh, that way you'll get an email when that course is complete and you'll get updates. So it's really easy to create an account. Just go to coningwithmitch.com, go to register here, uh, register an account. It'll take like 30 seconds and you'll, you'll have an account there. Um, also, or subscribe on YouTube and, and I'll definitely notify you guys when this course is ready. So again, as always, thanks for watching. It is uh, December 16th today. So if you celebrate Christmas, uh, Christmas is coming up. Merry Christmas and uh, New Year's also. Everybody celebrates New Year's. Not everybody celebrates Christmas. So Happy New Year if, if I don't see you. Uh, you. I probably will be releasing videos in the meantime. I get bored over the holidays and I just end up working some of the time. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.